Hi, my name is John Mount, and I'm from Win Vector, a data science research consulting and training company. And I want to give a small R chalk talk on some minor issues of notation and code maintenance. Now, my point is that as one works with R longer and longer and has to maintain more and more elaborate and long-running analyses, one learns to avoid the functions where it's not obvious from the source code what is happening. So that basically one learns to avoid attach, load, and save. So basically attach attaches columns of a structure or a list structure into an environment above your environment as if that structure were in your available in your environment, though it isn't and it doesn't always write back, so it's, it's kind of a confusing operator. Um, load reads an entire workspace image into your workspace, so you have no idea what set of objects are now present, and save saves all of your workspace. And basically R defaults, of course, to using these so that your workspace is continuous state that stays with you as you move on and on. Now, from a computer science point of view, you like to avoid state at all costs, because eventually state poisons you. So a state that is wrong hurts you, and state that is right hurts you because it becomes then an alien artifact that you can't reproduce. So um, I teach, basically, you want to work from an empty environment with commands and external data that gets the environment reliably into the state you want it to be. So instead of load and save, you tend to use read RDS and save RDS. Now, save RDS writes a single object to a specified file. So it writes a single specified object to a specified file. Read RDS returns a single object from a specified file. Now, these can be nearly as convenient as load and save because we can make that single object a named list of other arbitrary objects. That just gets us to a very slight notational crink, which the package wrapper solves very, very well. So as we would do library wrapper, and we would assume that we've already installed this. And the way we would read a set of objects from a named list that have been stored is we would say unpack A and B from read RDS file name. Now what this documents is that we believe that what's coming in is something that has names, at least A and B, it may have more, but we're ignoring them, so a named list is a very um, good thing. We're documenting the expectation that this is sort of something like a named list that has values A and B, and we're going to write the values A and B into our workspace under the names A and B. So this will throw an exception or stop if that's not present, and that's good. We want to stop near errors, not much later. And this documents what we think is coming into a workspace is this. No more is coming into this, and no less is coming into this. So unpack's kind of a cute little function. And basically, when you save RDS, you would say, you know, you'd just build a list a equals A, B equals B, file name equals, so forgive me if I may have mangled the syntax slightly, but basically you would save elements of your workspace by naming them with this little, I will save the object that is in my workspace with the name A as A, B is B. Um, we're also researching a uh, compaction of that, just a, basically a pack operator a, B, which is just a synonym for this little bit. So, um, but this gives us a really cute way of thinking that basically um, list, which has always been part of R, when we use it, we trap our objects in a named list and we need to get them back out. And there's many ways to do that. Um, attach being one possibility, with being a temporary way to do it. Um, actually, I kind of like with, so I'm not really going to make fun of that. Um, so, but uh, our feeling is 
that really maybe unpack is the natural co-arrow for list. So as we can do things like this, v is um, list a equals a, b equals b, and again, if you're uncomfortable with that, we're putting out a notation, the next wrapper called pack, and then you can say v arrow the other way. Assignment is allowed the other direction in R, uh, just some people complain about it, but um, to unpack A, B, and that would basically, this takes these elements from the global environment, copies, or from the environment you're working in, sorry, copies them into a named list. This takes these items from this named list and unpacks them into the environment you're working in. So basically, we see in this notation, in some sense, these arrows are reversed. So we have a nice co adjoint or sort of almost inverse relationships that basically we have reversed or co-arrows. And that's the point that if list is painting us into a corner where all of our values are trapped in a named list and we want to use them more fluidly in our environment, well unpack is the thing that does that. And um, so basically unpack and list have sort of dual roles. And uh, unpack, list is obviously part of R and then unpack is supplied in the um, package wrapper. And it's been uh, around for some sense. It works particularly well with uh, read RDS. And it has basically, once you have it, you start finding quite a lot of new uses for it. So basically, I'd say please give the wrapper package a try. In particular, give um, the uh, unpack operator a try. And here, basically, we're using the standard assignment. Um, we could also use a colon equals assignment, which is one of the more obsolete R assignment operators, but still in the language, and wrapper and several other packages try to give it some semantics. And these are, again, square brackets. Those looks very much like an array assignment, which is how the syntax works, though there are some alternate syntaxes. Anyway, my name is uh, John Mount. And as I said, I'm a... Uh, researcher, consultant, and trainer at WinVector LLC, a data science consulting, training, and uh, research company. And uh, we'd love to be in touch with you and maybe train some of you or augment your projects. Thank you very much.